Hi, this is Michael Edwards, Assistant Professor of Medicine at UC Denver, specializing in bioinformatics. This is part three of the David Bioinformatics Resource Tutorial. Uh, this is done in conjunction with the AACR 23rd Annual Workshop held in Snowmass, Colorado in 2014. So in our first tutorials, we basically our first tutorial was to how do we download data or at least our gene list into David and our gene list was looking at uh, genes different between two different forms of uh, B-cell lymphoma one more, one more aggressive than the other uh, our second tutorial looked at how do we explore this gene list at the gene level and this covered uh, the gene name batch viewer ID conversion tool and functional classification tools Today, what we're going to do is explore our list using the functional annotation tool. So we're no longer in the gene level phase. Now we're looking at how do these functional categories organize themselves. So I'm going to click on this tool here. And it'll bring us to this window. Uh, this is the annotation summary results page. And basically what it does is list some of the functional categories and databases that it used to organize these genes. And these are given here. Uh, it runs a gamut from disease, ontology, tissue expression. Uh, we can look at one of these. We can go to disease here. So if the database, the databases are lift, listed on this side, um, the percent here is the percent of our gene list that will fit into one of these uh, database categories. Uh, these are, this is the number of those genes, and then you can find out the genes in this chart. Uh, we can click on any one of these. I'm going to click on, let's click on the first one. So in this database, uh, it lists these genes, or these uh, diseases here. Uh, these are uh, the genes that were associated with this particular disease in our gene list. Here is the probability that we would get that, those genes associated with this particular function by random chance. And you have the multiple correction uh, uh, p-value also given. Um, just like the genes, we can alter these options any way we see fit. We can make it more or less strict. Uh, we can also add information like false discovery rates on this. We run using options. And as you, we're, we're looking at B cells here, and if you actually looked at, at some of these diseases, there are a lot of uh, immune type diseases, and that's kind of what you would expect from B cells. Um, let's go back to our original page, let's show you a few more. Um, pathways, everybody is usually interested in pathways. We can look down here. Uh, let's look at the KEG pathway. Again, the David software used these three databases to cluster these genes click on this chart here. So in this particular pathway, 194 genes out of our gene list, which was originally 660, fit in somewhere into the keg pathways. We can get a chart for that. And again, you're seeing a lot of uh, immune type pathways, but you're also seeing cell adhesion uh, molecules. And that's kind of what you expect with cancer. Obviously, these uh, cell adhesion is a, a big part of uh, cell proliferation, and you would expect to see a lot of these. Uh, JAK-STAT signaling pathway are up. We can look at all of those genes in our gene list that are associated with that, and they're given here. And let me show you one more thing, is protein interactions. Uh, there's not many databases that actually look at, you know, will go upstream and find overrepresented targets of particular genes. Uh, this one doesn't really do that as well, but it will give you uh, trans, uh, transcription factor binding sites. So we can look in this database, base, this UCSC. There are 649 of our genes have a, uh, a site of, for a transcription factor. We can open this up. And here are all the transcript factors here with potential binding sites in our genes. So this one here, NFAT, here are the genes with a potential binding site within this. And we can click on that and, uh, and explore this list. Uh, 
51% of our original genes have a potential end fat binding site. The odds of that happening are 1.6 times 10 to the negative 21st. Uh, again, here's the Benjamin Hoffmeyer uh, uh, p value. Again, you can download any of these lists at any point, and you can just go through this list and look for particular, you can look at the uh, transcript factors and find those genes with a potential site for that. So this can kind of give you an idea of, of maybe some upstream regulators uh, you might know might not know that are operating your system. This happens a lot. A lot of these transcript factors are activated by phosphorylation, removal of inhibitor. So you're never going to see it at the transcript level, but this gives you an opportunity to get to that level. Uh, we can do the functional annotation clustering. So uh, before we clustered on the genes with common annotation uh, terms. Now we're what we're going to do is is cluster the annotation terms based on common gene members. Uh, this kind of eliminates redundancy in the system that you have a lot of times, a lot of genes operate, are associated with different pathways, uh, different functional groups. So what this does is kind of combine all that into specific blocks of annotation. And it kind of helps you group the genes better. So we can click on that, functional annotation. This window comes up. Again, you can run this any with any options you want. We can add full change or false discovery rates, full change. We can uh, play with the terms as far as you know. Uh, how many terms do I, I want in common for it to be considered a cluster? Um, usually, right now we have 245 clusters, annotation clusters. I usually, when I'm analyzing data, I like to go a little higher than medium, so I'm gonna go high. Rerun using options. And now we have 224 because we were more stringent. Uh, given on the top, so this is annotation cluster one. So these are annotation terms that seem to carry or contain the same genes within our list. And you can see how they, they might be related. <laughs> you can definitely see how they're related. Cadherin. Uh, this is the enrichment score. How many times above just random noise we would expect that these annotation terms enriched in our gene list? We go to related genes. We can click on this bar here find out the genes that are associated with this particular category. We can click on genes on the top of this cluster. And so this gives us all the genes in this cluster that were on our original list. And just like the gene level analysis, we can do the, we can look at a 2D version of the clustering. Yes, I accept the risk. And this is just a Java program. And again, so all our functional categories this time are on the bottom. Now our genes are on the top. So anything with a green means that these particular genes are associated with this particular functional category. Um, and black would mean that it, it is not. So it has grouped all of these genes together, or grouped these functional categories together based on the occurrence of these similar genes. And again, we can download any of these, these files that we want. Uh, functional annotation chart, we, let's take a look at that one. So this basically just gives you a list of all the annotations with overrepresented members in your gene list. This is kind of a convenient way to, to look at the, if you just wanted to find the genes associated, say, with glycoprotein, we could look at there. There's 240, I could click on this. Here are all the genes on my original gene list that are associated with glycoprotein, and I can then download this. Or I could make a sublist of this if I wanted and analyze that data, data set. Um, again, count. These are the number of genes associated on our original list associated with this particular category, the percent of our list that they make up, the odds of getting that by random chance. And these are all ranked based on the probability of, of uh, based on p-values. So we can go here, again, you can see a lot of cell adhesion and immunoglobin. So uh, inflammatory response, and you're seeing a lot of uh, cell adhesion, cell motion, uh, which would seem to kind of jibe not only with our cell type, but with the disease we were actually looking at. Remember, one of these cancers is more aggressive.
and then the functional anno table, annotation table. And this basically just gives you a list of all of your genes and potential. So all of our genes are listed here in alphabetical order. And these are the functional categories associated with this. And again, it's using all those databases in red to pull from to, to construct this. Uh, this page is very good if you want more specific information on your genes. Um, that's about it. Um, this is this con concludes the David tutorial soft, uh, uh, bioinformatics resource tutorial. Um, so in the next tutorials, what I'm now going to look at, this was uh, looking at a freeware solution of bioinformatics. Uh, our next tu series of tutorials will look at Ingenuity Pathway Analysis, which is a commercial product and probably the, the best bioinformatic uh, platform around right now. So until then, we'll see you.